this out of an old book of sea songs uh, that was published in the 1880s by a lady called Laura Alexandrine Smith. And uh, it's called uh, a book called uh, The Music of the Waters. And um, this, that's where I got this story from. It concerns a clergyman whose mission in life was to save the souls of sinful sailors. And with this in view, he was engaged in conversation with one such whom he wished to convert to his way of thinking. Tell me, my man, he said, uh, how long have you been a sailor? <laughs> well, sir, says Jack, nigh on 40 years, man and boy, I've been at sea in a, in a fishing boat. Uh, and uh, was your father also a seaman? Oh, yes, sir, he sailed 50 years before his ship was wrecked and he got drowned. Good Lord, and your, your grandfather? My grandfather, he went sea on a whaler long, long years ago. He went to sea for 40 years. Then his ship were wrecked and lost with all hands. Good gracious, my poor man, said the clergyman. What a dreadful prospect for you. Are you not afraid to go to sea? Well, sir, said Jack, scratching his head and thinking a bit. Might I ask you what your father did for a living? Why, he was a clergyman like myself. And where did he die, sir? Well, in his bed, like a good Christian. And what about your grandfather, sir? Well, he also died in his bed like a good Christian. Well, sir, says Jack, ain't you afeard to go to bed? <laughs> good. Methinks I see a jovial spree of drunken fishermen carouse around old Grimsby town and put to sea again. Me sees, I think, oh, curse this drink, I've had a drop myself. Then set the rather shaky course for the continental shelf, and it's three score and ten. Boys and men got lost from Grimsby town. From Yarmouth down to Scarborough, they staggered round and round. Their heron all went rotten and their cod and skate as well. So they all got tight that bitter night and battled with the smell. <laughs> Methinks I see them heave and haul but mostly heave, I fear, <laughs> casting their breakfast overboard because of too much beer. October's night gave them a fright, these lads from Grimsby Town. There was many a fisher lad who wished he'd dyed his trousers brown. And it's three score and ten, boys and men got lost from Grimsby Town. From Yarmouth down to Scarborough, they staggered round and round. Their heron all went rotten, and their garden skate as well. So they all got tight, that bitter night, battled with the smell. Methinks I see them yet again, tis for the fourteenth time. Our helmsman sails in circles, cause he's stoned out of his mind. Then we spied the shoals of heron, but the skipper he cried, Hold on! If them's the shoals of heron, lads, we're in the wrong bleeding song. And it's three score and ten, boys and men got lost in Grimsby town. From Yarmouth down to Scarborough, they staggered around and round. Their heron all went rotten, and their car and skate as well. So they all got tight that bitter night, and battled with the smell. Um, it's an old-fashioned song. It's a song about. Uh, it's a song about advice being given to a young man who is considering marrying.
matrimony. And uh, it's called, um, that's the Lincolnshire Wedding Song, as I say. Lovely chorus, which goes, uh, get a little table, then a little chair, then a tiny house in the corner of the square. Get a little wife and save a little tin, and don't forget the cradle for to rock the baby in. As Veer said, uh, it's an old-fashioned song, and some of the ideas in it might nowadays be considered a little politically incorrect. You can tell when we get to them from the expression on my wife's face. <laughs> Please join in the chorus. <laughs> Some people think it jolly. Oh, that's a little sad. That's too high, actually. <clears throat> I thought that last one was a bit high. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's a half a tone higher than we normally do it. Still, we can handle it. <laughs> Some people think it jolly for to lead a single life. But I believe in marriage and the comforts of a wife. A wife's the greatest blessing if she's honest, good and true. So if you want to marry lads, I'll tell you what to do. Just get a little table, then a little chair, then a tiny house in the corner of the square. Get a little wife and save a little tin, and don't forget the cradle for to rock the baby in. Now, a married man has comforts, now it's not. Now a single man, a single man in lodging, no, 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 no. a single man in lodgings cannot have much delight, for there's no one to speak to him when he sits at home at night, and nothing to attract him more to pass his time away, but he'll quickly find the difference if he'll listen to what I say. And get a little table, then a little chair, then a tiny house in the corner of the square. Get a little wife and save a little tin, and don't forget the cradle for to rock the baby in. Now a married man has comforts which a single man has not. For his clothes are always mended, and his meals are always hot. At first they may have quarrels, just an odd one now and then. But it's hardly worthwhile falling out just to make it up again. So get a little table, then a little chair, then a tiny house in the corner. Get the cradle for to rock the 